Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Lasso Prayer today, where we answer some of your questions regarding the eruption at La Soufre St. Vincent. I'm Umari, and today I'm here with Professor Richard Robertson, who's back in St. Vincent again. Welcome, Richie. Thank you very much, Umari. Yes, indeed, I'm back in St. Vincent. Nice. I'm sure people are happy to have you back, happy <laughs> to have you at the controls again. Uh, so could you tell us very briefly, what's yeah. up with the volcano? Well, the volcano is still pretty quiet. It still essentially has gotten into a period in between eruptions, I think. The eruption has essentially ended and what you have now is ongoing you know, residual activity, which means there's a lot of steaming going on. There's quite a bit of hot rock up there close to the surface, so that that will both drive the steaming and also drive the fact that we still have in place things that we call hot spots. Um, and because it dumps so much ash and so much loose material on the summit, anytime you have rain, you have lahas. So yesterday, for example, we had lahas in most of the valleys, the other areas that would have been um, inundated, areas that would have been flooded and places that people shouldn't be passing. Um, so that's, that's the kind of activity. Yeah? You still have been produce, producing quite a bit of, of, of gas. So we still have an SO2 fluxes above 200, 200 tons per day. Um, up to three, three fifty, that kind of amount. So, yeah, ongoing residual activity. I say, I'd say, um, and the indicative of the fears between eruptions. Okay, so since the eruption seems to be on the decline, mm -hmm. um, why are you here? Why are you back in Saint Vincent? What are you up to? Give me a pass for the fact that this is where I come from. I love the place. <laughs> yeah, well. You know, I, I, even, even if we have gone past sort of the intense period of an eruption, you still need to keep a close eye on the volcano because the volcano can erupt, it can change. You know, you always have to, to look for those changes. And it's essential in between eruptions that we, we both look for those changes. But also because the eruption had a tremendous impact, it could teach us a lot in terms of its impact on the land, in terms of trying to understand better exactly what happened. So one of the things I'm here doing is really focusing a lot more on impacts, both impact to the built environment as well as to the natural environment. So I'm, I'm here with um, Dr. Victoria Hart, uh, Miller, sorry, who is a specialist in risk and, and impact studies. And she'll be looking at areas which have been affected by the Lahas, particularly by the ash falls, you know, how buildings have operated, what impacts they have. So we could better understand how volcanic hazards interact with certainly built environment and that could help estimate risk to St. Vincent and to other places, but also help us understand better how they interact. I am also looking at, well, we are also looking at the Lahas and trying to model Lahas, Lahas um, these mod flows. And to do that, we need to get a better idea of, of, of the change in the drainage systems, the drainage in the valleys. We're going to try to build up a better digital elevation model of particularly lower flanks of the volcano so that we could model if a laha starts at the summit or wherever it starts, how does it pan out and what does it do lower down? So I'll be flying a drone, um, one of those aerial, unmanned aerial people, um, um, aircraft that will go about taking lots of pictures and try to stitch those pictures together to help us to better understand how the morphology, how the land has changed. And by extension also, it will give us something about a little bit more detail about the deposits that was laid out. So really is an impact ongoing study of the volcano, what it did, so that it can better inform what it can do and how we advise the authorities for future eruptions. Oh, that all sounds very interesting. Yeah. Um, wish I was there. Um, <laughs> I know some members of the education and outreach team are also yeah. on island. Why are they there? What would they be doing? Well, actually, this 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 month we have quite a few people on island. We normally do, but we have we don't have number of things. So the educational teach team are investigating now our work in terms of outreach on the island. People would have seen that we we put a lot of effort into getting information out to the public, and we really want to assess how good or bad we did, what worked, what didn't work. Um, so it'll be coming about talking to people and I, I'd encourage people in St. Vincent and outside St. Vincent who have any kind of perspective views on some of the things that we did, we'd like your feedback on them. So when they come to you and ask you a question, you know, 
about about how we were doing or how we were not doing. I hope that you could assist them because we're trying to better assess what we were doing good so that we could do it better next time and we could apply it to other islands. Okay, and I know also related to information collection and you know helping people be better prepared. I know also there's an app that's supposed to be launched yeah. in St. Vincent. Could you tell us some yeah. more about that? Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, even before the eruption, as you say, as as you know, we have had a focus on St. Vincent. One of the things that we were trying to do is develop a, 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 a something that was in, you know calling a my has a, a, an application, a, a smartphone application that allows one to go into the field and collect information about what's happening, essentially. Um, you know, if you go in the field, if you're somebody in Georgetown or Chatsbele or, or, or you're fancy, and you see a mud flow or you see an ash fall, you can actually go and take a picture, you could make a note, and you could put it on this app, and this app will then give us information, us, that is the monitoring scientists, as well as the, the National Disaster Organization, people like that who would find that information very useful to better assess what, what was happening and how they respond. That will give them information directly from the horses, more, more or less, from the people who are feeling it. And we hope to launch that app into Vincent later on this month. Uh, it's something that's been in development for quite some time. It started out as a My Volcano app, and it's now changed into something that's more multi-hazard. So it's not just the volcano alone. It's not just volcanic hazards. You know, about flooding, landslides, any kind of observations that the public might have that could inform us about what's happening out there that could be quite useful. Um, so in a sense, it's going to help us to get a lot more citizen scientists, a lot more scientists out there, out in the public, who could acquire information. And therefore that builds up on our ability to monitor the volcano, which is useful for people. So again, just like the education outreach, I'm encouraging people to, once we launch the app, you know, to get involved with it, download it, use it, send us the information, that'll be extremely useful. So just to be clear, we're not sending persons up to no, 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 take no, no. pictures. No, no, because... no, definitely not. Definitely not. I'm saying if they are where they are already. So for example, yesterday, I was, I was at a river called Tuluma, which had come down and people were stuck on one side trying to get across, you know. I was taking pictures. Anybody else could have taken that picture. I wasn't going over the river. I was standing there, I, I was kind of stranded. Of course, I was seeing people doing things that were kind of kind of not a sensible thing, trying to go across in a car and get stuck and then pull out, that kind of thing. But those kinds of observations, you're not putting yourself in harm's way. You're already there. I'm not going to go up to the volcano and take a picture because you want to see what's in it. No. We say that if you're here already and if you're in your house and the house starts to get ash on it, you could take some observations that you could then share with us that could prove very useful to us, but to everybody else. Um, just like you, you might share it in your WhatsApp chat. We wanted to share it with us through this app. And is, are those pictures limited to ones that they only capture now, or could they share photos of the eruption that has yeah. gone? Yeah, no, no, they can. And uh, I mean, we, we, we want to be current, yes. But um, the way in which the app works, yes, you have to have internet connectivity to send the information to us. But when you're acquiring the information, you don't have to be connected. So you just snap pictures and later on when you get some connection, you could send it to us. And we're really looking at any kind of observations about the natural environment that's going on out there. Um, we're looking at things currently, but you, you pose the question about something that might have happened. It would be interesting, any kind of observations you had, it would be interesting to get them. Um, we're looking at current, but I don't think we'll, we'll tell you not to send anything that's past. We, we'd like to acquire that too. Great, thanks for clearing that up. So it sounds like you have a lot of work to get to, so I'll leave you to get to that. Mm -hmm. And just thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to come and update us about what is going on at La Soufre and in St. Vincent in general as we continue to recover from the eruption. So as we go, we want to remind persons that the... NEMO and the UE Seismic Research Center are the official sources of information on the volcano. So you'll stay tuned to those sources for any type of information. And also we still discourage persons from trying to visit the summit of the volcano. Thank you and have a good day. You too, thank you very much.